Usually we're studying Tom Hanks, Viola Davis, Denzel Washington, Viggo Mortensen, and all the greats. Today I'm going to study an actor who I never met before this. I think I saw him on Girls for an episode or two, but his name is Eben Moss Backrack, and um, he smashed my senses in Andor. The actor is killing it, and he's killing it in a very specific way. We can learn so much about acting from what he's doing. Clearly this actor has the intelligence to understand the scene, the emotion is flowing through him, but most importantly is to watch the accidents and odd spontaneous behavior that's occurring in him because he's so immersed in the character. So here we go. It's um, from Andor uh, episode five. It just dropped like whatever, two weeks ago. So it's brand new stuff from a huge multi-million dollar Disney production of a Star Wars TV show. So um, Andor runs out of his tent. He's fallen asleep, which has sort of left himself off guard. He doesn't trust anybody because he's this one man standing kind of guy. He runs out and this guy, Skeen, who we only see in three episodes. Uh, the first episode he's introduced, we get a lot more of him in this one, and then we get the finale in the third episode with him. Uh, so this actor, even Moss, has a three episode part, and I think absolutely nails it. This whole episode is back to back, brilliant acting and fantastic acting scenes. Um, everything in this in this scene you're gonna learn from script analysis and emotional analysis and approach, the actors are doing so well. So here he is. Go there. Go ask me to have a look. So uh, Andor's in the negative because he doesn't know what's going on. All he knows is his stuff has been taken from him and he doesn't trust anybody. So his conversation is trust. Whereas uh, Skeen is in the positive, he's kind of figured this guy out. He's looking at his stuff, he knows stuff about his gun, but he wants to know more about him. So his objective is to absolutely get to know who Andor is. Whereas Andor's objective is to get his stuff back, not trust anybody and shut the door on any kind of friendship. So um, really the two conversations are identity and trust. And I think uh, casting Andor's conversation is to keep everybody at bay, distrust, everyone is betrayal, so arm's length, the world so his whole thing is distrust he's only in it for the cash right despite the fact that he knows who he really is and who he really is is a mercenary and he's coming here for the cash not for the cause and so the two conversations could be cash versus cause you can think of that way too but we know that andor is going to end up giving his life for the cause so uh, we know that inside of him is something more you know so maybe in the underneath in his in his counterpoint he really does care but on the outside, he distrusts everybody. Whereas Mr. Skeen's job is to, is to understand the identity of this guy. So he starts in a positive because he's already got the guy wrapped across the table. He's getting to know who he is, but his objective is to find out more about him. I just want to break down the script a little bit so you understand this, the story. I would imagine that even Moss, I don't know this gentleman, I'd love to meet him, but I would imagine that when he uh, booked the part and his agent said, you got three episodes on the biggest TV show ever made, a Star Wars show. He went, yeah, and then called his coach and then worked and worked and worked and worked and worked and worked and worked because no moment is missed by this gentleman. Like not a single moment is missed by this actor. He's having second thoughts. Go talk to her if you want. She'll be up soon. Now, you'll notice in Act 1 the distance between them, so there's conflict. Conflict is distance, whereas proximity is resolution. Skeen is trying to create the conflict. He's like, who are you? I want to know who you are, because I need to know whether or not I can put my life in your hand. You can think of this whole scene as a French Resistance film. They're the French Resistance and the Nazis have taken over France, and they're, they're going to do a big robbery tomorrow from the Nazi banks or like knock a train off or something. So if this, if you didn't know, you'd probably think this is a World War II film. Skeen's objective is to figure out who this guy is. They're going in to do the big hit on the empire and they could and most probably will all die. And so he wants to know like, can I trust you? So Skeen's objective is to find out the identity of this guy. Who is this guy who has joined us at the last second? The rest of them have been at this for seven months and they all know each other intimately, but this guy just showed up like three days ago and he's been hoisted on them. So the skiing is like, who are you? Because I, I need to know that before I put my life in your hands. But his counterpoint is, I don't trust you. I don't like you, I don't trust you, I don't know who you are, and I wish you weren't here. And then you can see the A, B, B, A. Um, Andor's is, I don't trust you, I don't like you guys, I don't want to be here, but the truth is, is he really, really should tell them who he is, and he really, really should be fighting for something more than just himself, which we find out he will do at the end of Rogue One. So uh, in Act One, 
Skeen wants to create the conflict. Who are you? I'm trying to figure this out, right? Whereas uh, um, Andor doesn't want any conflict. He just wants to get his stuff and get out of there. So in act one, you've got distance because distance is conflict and proximity is resolution. So act one, distance. Then you're gonna see in act two, proximity. And then act three, distance again. It's like blocking 101. It's like the first year of theater school. It's a $700 trillion episode Disney show and they're blocking it absolutely standard. Why? Because that's how people really move in real life. That's how people do it. They create distance when they're in conflict. So that's act one. Come on, Mitch. That plus the bad arms, pretty clear. You left wherever you were in a hurry. See, he's fetching for questions. He's digging. Like, so this stuff, the bad arm, you left in a hurry, like, who are you? And then he does this thing, which is great. Nine seconds in the episode. We're gonna discuss that moment in a second. That absolutely scrumptious emotional human behavior that uh, even Moss Backrack, the actor's a little permitting scheme to have, it's so good. But basically he goes, I know you, I got you, I got this gun, you know, you ran in a hurry, this is a corporate issue, so he's like, I know you, from... you've been into some shit, so I need to know who you are. This is stakes so high. How's your arm? I'll be fine. In that moment, how's your arm? I'll be fine. Uh-huh. Pop, pop, pop. So the dialogue is fast and it's tight when people really speak, but that's such an interesting moment because how's your arm is him digging for information. And instead of good or bad, which would be the only two real uh, answers you could have, Andor goes, I'll be fine, which is a deflection because his objective is to deny, avoid, deflect, you know, stop trying to figure out who I am. I don't trust you, so I'm going to give you nothing. So he says, how's your arm? Andor says, I'll be fine. And back rack, or sorry, Skeen goes, uh, uh-huh, like that, poof. Like, uh-huh, I, got, I understand who you are now. You wanna shut down, you don't wanna open up to me. You know, you don't trust me, and you don't wanna give me information. It's so gorgeous, look how tight it is. You're lucky to be alive right now. There's that moment we're gonna look at. We've been down here for months, the stakes are high. How's your arm? I'll be fine. Uh-huh. And, uh, who, who's is this? So he goes, <laughs> how's your arm? I'll be fine. Uh-huh. The two conversations are right in there. How's your arm? Let me know about you. I'll be fine. I don't trust you. Uh-huh. So this guy goes, uh-huh. I get it. Pop, pop, pop. And that'll be the end of act one. And he goes, so where'd you get this gun from? You know? And he's like, yeah, I didn't get a name. And he walks over. So, so at this point, Skeen has got no information whatsoever of the identity of this guy, and this guy has managed to shut him down and uh, not trust him and not give him anything. Yeah, you got that? So that's the end of Act 1. So at the end of Act 1, Andor is going to close the conflict by coming in and shutting down the distance. So proximity. And here we have this beautiful moment. Boom! That's a, a gorgeous realization. If you're gonna follow along on your Disney Plus channel, Disney, am I plugging you? It's six minutes and 91 seconds, is he has a major realization. And his major realization is, wait a second, he does know something. So now we're in act two. Skeen loses the scene. He loses act one, we just watch him lose act one. But in act two, he's gonna win. So he has a win right here, which is, oh, he recognizes the tattoo. You know what this means, don't you? It's not, you know what this means? Or you know what this means? It's. Oh, you know what this means. There's a recognition of each other. He goes, oh, I understand you now. There's no Where were you? See, so he's still digging for information, but he gets him now. He goes, oh, you've been in imperial prisons. It's like he was in Nazi concentration camp. You know what it's like. You've been in pain, right? So he goes, ah, I'm figuring you out now. Can you see the actor digging for the information right there? Right? See you and that's the one point where Andor gives away information. So, so Skeen here is now winning the scene in Act 2. Three years, I was 13 when I went in. See the camaraderie now? No, well, you didn't miss anything. See that? He goes, I don't know it. You didn't miss anything. Yeah. He starts shaking his head. That was a camaraderie. There's a proximity. There's, a, there's a, an intimacy. A cages, huh? And then we get the title of the episode. They build a lot of cages, right? The axe forgets, but the tree remembers. The axe forgets, but the tree remembers. And what he's saying is, I will never forget what they did to me. Now, Sergeant, do the chopping. Now, look at that emotional life. And that's so incredibly beautiful. Go study seven minutes and ten seconds. They built a lot of cages, huh? The axe forgets, but the tree remembers. Now, Sergeant, do the chopping. So gorgeous. So the whole scene is like compressed. The conflict is very minimal. It's not expressed. 
and the emotions are not expressed, the emotions are all compressed, but you can just like, it's, you'd almost, you almost go yeah, watching the scene, like it's so absolutely intense, it's so electric. And look at that gentleman, look at that emotional life. So we're gonna come back, we're gonna talk about that in a second. I just wanna get the scene analysis done. So that's it, that's what you hear? Revenge? Yeah, that's good enough for now. So then, uh, so and or just ask the question, you got a little information, you know? You? I was told I could help. So now we're into act three. My only critique of this scene, it's very hard to find the critique in the scene, but my only critique in the scene is it's not clear uh, in the directing or it might be in uh, Diego's performance. It's not clear where the act two ends. I think it's- That's good enough for now. I think it's that moment, that would be the end of act two. So they've both shared, they've connected. So now Skeen feels like he knows who he is. So then he moves into act three. So he says, you? And now Andor avoids, avoids, avoids. And that's when Skeen goes, oh man, I'm not getting any more information out of this guy. So now we're in act three. This conversation, remember, he doesn't trust. He goes, uh, it always breaks at the weakest point. Skeen, who's been searching for identity this whole time, who are you, who are you, who are you? He lays down the identity of each person because that's his conversation. He's like, okay, you wanna know who these people are? I'll tell you who these people are. He's great, but he's all in, he's a true believer. Talks about the kid. Nothing but the cause for him. And there's Sinta. Yeah, he talks about Sinta. She's stone cold and fearless. Probably the toughest one here. He defines all their relationships, all of who she's they are. She's already sharing a blanket, if that's what you're wondering. You'll notice that he's putting his shirt on because it's the in the third act. Fabulous last line because it's an ambiguous line. Wouldn't it be lovely if that's who you really were? And wouldn't it be lovely if that was the case? We could just win and walk away. It doesn't happen that way. If you're devoted to the cause, the cause will take you. That's the whole point, right? Okay, good. So you've got this guy, uh, the actor, even Moss Backrack. He goes, okay, I understand the conversations. I understand the three acts. I understand the relationships. Now, I'm gonna dig into the emotional life. And the emotional life is, we're probably gonna die tomorrow. We're giving our life for something really important. And the reason why I'm doing it is because I have such hate in me for what they've done to my family. So watch the actor's emotional life. Watch the actor's uh, emotional depth. I got no idea. What about this? Yeah, right. Yeah, that's good. So here we go, watch this actor's emotional life. Oh, you didn't miss anything. Yeah. They built a lot of cages, huh? The yeah, axe forgets, but the tree remembers. Look at the trauma. Like there's trauma and pain and resentment and rage. And like the whole emotional life is, you took everything away from me and now I'm gonna do the same to you. Like that's his emotional life. But he's not crying, he's not screaming, he's not smashing his chest, but it's just pouring out of every pore. So this actor is emotionally completely prepared and ready. Oh, sorry to do the chopping. Mm, God, it's so good. Look at the pain in there. So that's it. You can see, by the way, um, they've put in um, whip marks on the back of his back. So he has been that's tortured funny. when he was in prison. So to add to the backstory, it's very subtle, but it's that, you know, he's been abused, traumatized. Yeah. Revenge. Yeah, that's good enough for now. Ugh, the rage, the anger inside of him. You? Yeah, okay. This actor has figured out, okay, who's my character? What's the conversations? What's this three act structure? What are my objectives? What's my relationship to him? What is the character's emotional life? What is my emotional life to understand? He, he builds all of that. And then he could have walked in and done a pretty damned good job. But the reason why this actor in particular and this scene has absolutely made me go, oh my God, he's good, is that he's gone fully into what he needs to do. Every actor should do this, which is he takes every moment of the script and everybody's spoken of, and he saturates himself in the understanding of what does that mean to me? Like, what does that mean to me? The prisons, the tattoos, the gun, what the Empire has done to him. He's worked all that out for sure. The whole conversation's identity. He's taken the time to figure out who are these other teammates. Worried about the kids. That makes a surprise. He's great, but he's all in. He's a true believer. Nothing but the cause for him. See that? He, I really, he knows who Nemec is. Now here's the whole point of this talk, is this moment. Watch him. Like, what was that? He has this automatic, instinctive, accidental, spontaneous response when he thinks about Sinta, and he goes, and he looks away for a second. 
his relationship to her is she's tougher than nails. Cause, no one's tougher than her than Cynthia Cause, right? It's a surprise. Watch this. He's great, but he's all in. He's a true believer. The camera pushes in because it's such a beautiful me. moment. And there's Cynthia. Ugh, it's so great. So what's going on? Um, his relationship to Cynthia is... No, it's a surprise. He's great, but he's all in. He's a true believer. Nothing but the cause for him. And there's Cynthia. So, at exactly 7 minutes and 58 seconds, go in and watch that moment again and again and again. He's great, but he's all in. He's a true believer. Nothing but the cause for him. And there's Cynthia. It's uh, exactly 8 minutes into the episode. There's a relationship to Cynthia. So, is it she kicked his ass? Is it that he respects her like it's his own sister? Is it that he's fallen in love with her? I think the, the point is it hurts to think that possibly tomorrow she could be dead for the cause because his counterpoint would be what Andor thinks, which is it's every man for himself. So despite the fact that he believes in the cause, at what cost? And I think it hurts him, which is why he looks away, to imagine Cinta being dead because clearly he respects her so much. Whatever it is, this actor has taken the time to dig into this character, dig into the script, and make sure that every single relationship to everything spoken and everybody involved, he has a very clear idea of. So he's got a complete understanding of the script and the analysis that's so incredibly thorough. He has an emotional understanding of the character and has allowed himself to be emotionally prepared, personalized it however he did. And then he takes the time to saturate himself in each and every relationship or emotional relationship, the meaning of everything in the scene. Then he surrenders to the scene, and then the scene starts. And because of that, the man starts to have these accidental responses. No, it's a surprise. He's great, but he's all in. He's a true believer. The one at eight minutes. The cause for him. And the center. That little, that little thing he does at eight minutes is so incredibly beautiful. Earlier in the scene, two minutes before, at six minutes and seven seconds, you see him do something similar. It's a weird, responsive accident. You're lucky to be alive right now. He's got this little thing in his eyes, and he's bouncing his head, and he's looking around, and, and so, what a beautiful frame to end on. Uh, even Moss Backrack has done all of his homework, permitted himself to become character, has surrendered to the scene, and then he's embodying what acting is, which is allowing the character to make weird choices for him, to have spontaneous, surprising accidents, because acting is an orchestrated accident, and he has figured out the orchestration, and now he's permitting the accident. Acting is the inevitable surprise, and he set up all the inevitability of it, and now he and we and the camera are all being surprised by him, and I'm certain Diego Luna was being surprised. You do all the homework, understand the script, and then stop making choices, and instead let the character choose for you. And then the life exudes through the character and we are connected to it. That's what acting is. And this man is doing it, point blank.